1861, Norman Triplett would write what many would consider the first social psychology paper, a paper that would usher in the dawn of a new field of study known as sports science. Sports science has captured the imagination of popular media, but there are many misconceptions about what sports science is. So what actually is sports science? Sport has become highly profitable. The fitness industry is estimated to be worth around 84 billion US dollars. To quite simply put it, sport and exercise science is the application of scientific principles to sport and exercise. However, sports science is more involved than that. So it was decided in Helsinki by some sports scientists with possibly far too much time in their hands to create definitions for both sport and exercise and to differentiate between the two. Sport is to do with performance whereas exercise is often referred to fitness or to health. Yes again, you need to exercise in order to do performance sports. It must also be noted that physical activity and exercise are not the same thing. Physical activity in daily life can be categorized into occupational, sport conditioning, household or other activities. Exercise is physical activity that is planned, structured and repetitive and has a final or an intermediate objective, the improvement or maintenance of physical fitness. Physical fitness is a set of attributes that are either health or skill related and the degree to which people have these attributes can be measured with specific tests. Often when we think of sports science, we usually think of someone sitting on a bike or on a running machine with tubes hanging out their mouth attached to a computer like some kind of symbiotic relationship between man and machine. Or we may think of the amazing stats, facts and figures, but there is more to sports science than just measuring forces. In sports science there are three main domains with which all subjects fit into. An exercise psychology, the study of human behaviour with relation to sport and fitness. Biomechanics and kinesiology, if you like, is the sexy side of sports science. This is the study of forces and movement of objects. It's normally the first thing people think about or associate with sports science. Physiology is a study of the function of the body. There are three main approaches which sports scientists can view a problem. An interdisciplinary approach is utilizing more than one area of sport and exercise science in an integrated and coordinated manner in an attempt to solve real-world problems for individuals and groups within the sport and exercise environment. Multidisciplinary teams are people from different disciplines working together, each drawing on their disciplinary knowledge. Cross-disciplinary is where an individual views a problem through two or more domains. In science, we consider information that has been published in journals as empirical evidence and therefore as being highly valid, highly factual. The problem with this kind of information is that it's not easily accessible to the wider population or easily understood. This can lead to people searching for information from questionable sources. The so-called bro science. Yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah, that and protein. 5,000 calories, that's what I'm working with now. You better oh. be careful though, because if you don't do it 15 minutes after workout, it's not going to have the effects. Oh. I understand that bro science isn't necessarily a, an, an empirical or a scientific term. However, it symbolizes the unsupported, bad evidence that there is out on the internet. As represented by this quote from Dr. Kelsey Erickson's research, I just go through and see what people say, then see if there is a review on YouTube. If they give the green light, I go ahead. If it does not work, or doesn't, don't feel right, then I stop 
and sell it on to somebody else who is stupid enough to take it. Bro size is lifting a vase from an unqualified bro who looks like he works out. Every jack dude to the gym is a gold mine of unfounded advice. Passed down from generation to generation. We believe it works because that guy told me, and he's freaking huge! Christ, that accent is awful. Better stick to the day job then. Basically, the motto of the story is, beware of any advice that has no scientific evidence to back it up and sounds like it comes out the certain bodily cavities. Norman Triplett was born in Perry, Illinois, 1861. In 1898, he wrote what is now recognised as the first published study in the field of social psychology. His experiment was on social facilitation effect. Triplett noticed that road cyclists tend to have faster times when riding within a presence of a counterpart, as opposed to riding alone. He concluded that the bodily presence of another contestant participating simultaneously in the race serves to liberate latent energy not ordinarily available. This can be known as slipstreaming, or in the case of cycling, known as drafting. I shall use Roger Bannister's four minute mile as an example of this. As the gun fired, Chris Brasher went into the lead and I slipped in effortlessly behind him, feeling tremendously full of, full of running. My legs seemed to meet no resistance at all, almost as if impelled by an unknown force. The term slipstreaming describes an object travelling inside the slipstream of another. If you look at where Roger Bannister is placed, he is directly behind Chris at this point. By slipstreaming or drafting, you are able to reduce drag. This means that Roger is able to exert 4% less energy compared to Chris in front. The weather conditions were overcast and windy. Therefore, by positioning himself there, he could save up to around 8% of energy. He is also protected more from wind resistance and by drafting on a windy day you can preserve up to 80% of energy you would otherwise spend fighting air resistance. That corresponds to about one second per 400 meters at that current pace. Oxygen consumption is also greatly reduced when drafting. Although less of an issue at slower speeds, Slipstreaming is more aerodynamic for both the lead runner and the chasers. Two runners who run separately will find it harder than two runners drafting. There is also the tactical and competitive elements to think about. You are more likely to run faster competing against someone than running alone. The next legend we are going to talk about is the weird and eccentric Mybridge. Edward Mybridge was an English photographer and pioneering work with photographic studies of motion. Trying to win a bet, Edward Mybridge managed to dispel the myth about horses' gait. It was previously thought that horses ran with the legs screwed out in front. Edward Mybridge's work helped to inspire others like Etienne Jules Meret to not just to capture horses and human motion, but to try and understand the mechanics of motion. This transposed over into sport. During the 1900 Olympic Games, biomechanists were allowed to analyse human motion and analyse the athletes while competing. One of the more interesting findings from Murray's analysis was the comparison of this winning hurdle action to the method of the French and Mr. Potier. In this example, the photographic image taken using chronophotography was drawn onto a single image, clearly showing the progression of the technique. So Alvin taking the hurdle with a straight front leg 
similar to modern hurdlers compared to the Frenchman below who tackles the hurdle quite high. Although we advanced the technology for biomechanics, many of the techniques that they mastered in this era are still used to this day. During the 20th century, many of the sports science research took their uh, inspiration from the space race and vice versa. If we look at many of the Soviet studies, they looked at how to position the body within the air as this would help with gymnastics by either tucking the legs into the body or by elongating the arms and the legs. You can facilitate optimal uh, rotation linear rotation or angular rotation or by utilizing the core prevent yourself from rotating this can be seen from Felix Bamgarter's world record skydive attempt With the issues of participation in physical activity, pioneer political agenda, and high performance sport embracing science more than ever before, the scope and demand for applying sport and exercise science in a variety of contexts is growing. The heavy use of sports science principles have been adopted by business, the military, and also medical sectors. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please subscribe down the bottom if you liked it or like the videos. If you have any comments, simply write down below. Any videos, any questions you want to ask, simply write them down in the comments and I will ask them best, answer them to the best of my ability even. Or I might even make a video of them. To find any more information, you can contact me on Adam MPT and Performance. I'm not that hard to find. I look forward to your reply.